Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range with the new Estonian service rifle. The Estonians call it the R20 or the Rahe. It's manufactured by LMT, and I have it all kitted out based upon images and video that I've been able to find on the internet with regards to the R20 and how the Estonians are kitting the rifles out. So we'll talk more about that in this video. I picked this one up from Copper. They are currently doing a production run, so you can find them online anywhere between $3,000 and $3,500, depending where you shop online. And so when these are gone, who knows if they'll ever do another production run or not. And that's what's kind of cool about the LMT reference rifle collections. They are modern collectibles, if you will. So let's talk about the Estonian rifle, take a closer look at it, and have some fun because that's what this is all about, right? Shooting and having a blast. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, many of its former satellite states wanted to become NATO members, and that was because they wanted to protect themselves from future Russian aggression, something we know is a very real threat in today's world. Russia's currently invading Ukraine. They were doing so to stop them from joining NATO. They've also threatened Finland and Sweden with military invasion if they continue on the path of joining NATO. But in 2004, Estonia, with a couple of other former Soviet bloc countries, joined NATO. And at the time, they were using a number of different military service rifles, and that would include the Galil, an Israeli AK variant, and also the German G3 rifle. And so they were seeking to adopt a 5.56 rifle that would be compatible with its NATO's allies and something that they felt was modern and would carry them you know, into the future in terms of small arms and replace all the old weapons systems that they currently had in inventory. That's where we get the R20 you see here before you now. So next let's talk about the reference rifles, one of the things I've changed on it, and then talk about how they've accessorized the rifle or I've accessorized the rifle based upon how the Estonians have accessorized it based upon the videos and images I've seen coming out of Estonia. The reference rifle that you can pick up here in the United States obviously is going to be semi-automatic. The rifle will come with a Magpul stock on it, and I remove that Magpul stock and put on a standard Colt M4 style stock because based upon the images I see coming out of Estonia, this is the stock that they're actually using. But everything else that you get with the rifle seems to be clone correct if you're attempting to build an Estonian reference rifle for your own collection, much like I have. So there's some things that make this a little bit different than other rifles that LMT has sold. One of the biggest differences is this pistol grip. Now, the civilian rifle that I have here does not have this functionality, but the military service rifle does, and that is a shot counting system that's integrated into the pistol grip of the rifle. It works with a base unit, and it will transmit to the base unit and the armorer how many rounds have been fired. And so they can keep very strict you know, maintenance records for the gun so they know when it's time to change a piston component or a barrel or something like that. So that's really kind of neat and very forward thinking. And I'm curious to see how that plays out for the Estonian military because I can see the US military adopting something like that as well uh, because it makes a lot of sense from maintaining a rifle standpoint, especially when the rifles are in service for 60 years like they are in the US. All right, so pistol grip's totally different. We have a Mars lower, which is kind of a standard lower for LMT, which means it's gonna have its ambi functionality. First of all, we have an ambi selector lever. It's, pre it's present on both sides. We have an ambi bolt catch, bolt release, which is a ping pong paddle on the right-hand side of the receiver. So I can lock the bolt open and I can also drop the bolt with my index finger right there. Magazine release, where you would expect it to be. Enhanced trigger guard. Roll it over to the other side. Ping pong paddle right where you'd expect it to be. Ambi selector lever, ambi charging handle, and here's our magazine release for the left-hand side of the receiver. You will also notice that it has a very flared magazine well to facilitate rapid magazine changes. One of the things that sets LMT apart from the competition is the fact that they machine their upper receivers out of one chunk of aluminum. So everything from back here to the front of the rail system is all one chunk of aluminum. That makes it very rigid, very durable. That means you can mount you know, other accessories out there like laser designators and they're not gonna flex like they would on a more conventional rail system that attaches to the front of the receiver of a standard AR-15 M16. It does have M-Lock out here on the rail system. And it does feature LMT's quick change barrel system. So it basically pinches the barrel full 360 degrees, holds it very tightly, and you can take the barrel out, put it in in just minutes, and it should maintain zero, very minimal zero shift. Moving out to the end, we have a Gen 2 gas block. This is a short stroke gas piston gun. And then out on the end, we have a muzzle device that is intended to be used with a GSL 
suppressor. Now, I have a suppressor on order. It hasn't come in yet, so we weren't able to feature it in today's video, but that's what this muzzle device is for. The rifle has the proper 14.3 inch barrel, but because of our stupid NFA laws, they had to pin and weld the muzzle device, <clears throat> excuse me, on the end of the barrel so that it would meet that overall barrel length of 16.1 inches so you don't wind up in prison for 10 years. The barrel does have a one in seven twist and is also chrome lined. Now the gun takes down much like any other standard AR-15 M16. So if you're not familiar with the process, shame on you, especially if you're an American, just pull your rear pin out, pull back on your T-handle. And you can see that for a short stroke gas piston gun, this is very much conventional. Standard AR-15 M16 bolt. The cam pin has the surface machined into the bolt carrier itself. It's not two pieces like on a DI gun where you will have a gas key bolted to the top of it. Uh, with the short stroke gas piston guns, you have that little face where the tappet hits it machined into one piece. And you'll also notice that it is cut for full auto fire and the serrations for the, uh, for the Ford Assist. So pretty nice stuff. I mean, nice enlarged ambi charging handle. It does come with LMT sights. So this is a standard LMT sight on the rear. I've removed the front sight, much like the Estonians have based on the videos and images I've seen and replaced it with some accessories. So now let's talk about the accessories that you see on this rifle, because this is where I thought it was kind of interesting. They spent an awful lot of money on the guns themselves. LMTs are not inexpensive, but then they went an affordable route with the optics, at least where they currently are in terms of outfitting their current R20 rifles. I get asked all the time, Mac, how can I get involved in the firearms industry? Well, there's no easy answer, but one way you can easily get involved in the firearms industry is to become a certified gunsmith. Modern Gun School has been teaching gunsmiths since 1945. It is accredited college, and also if you're a veteran and have a GI Bill, you can use that to enroll at Modern Gun School. So please swing by and check them out. I have a link in the video description below. So this is where things get interesting. In looking at videos and images coming out of Estonia, they were using different optics and lights and lasers, but the most commonly encountered optics, lights, and lasers that I saw are what's on the rifle right now. I wanna thank our friends over at primaryarms.com for sending out the red dot sight, for sending out the magnifier, laser, and the white light that you see on the gun. Uh, if you haven't checked out primaryarms.com, they sell all sorts of really cool accessories. Please check them out. Again, that's primaryarms.com. So back here we have a hollow sun, three by magnifier. It's not even their latest and greatest small one. This is a standard old school three by flip to the side magnifier. Up front, we have an HE 515 red dot sight, has flip up caps, it has protected adjustment turrets, and then it has push button on and off and brightness settings on top. Both of these devices have quick detach mounts on them from Hollow Sun, and that's exactly what the Estonians were rocking when uh, I was watching some of the videos. I guess I should point out this has a standard A2 Ford Assist and A2 brass deflector, as if that's something special, but I didn't point that out earlier. So over here, on the, using the M-Lock rail section, I put a 1913 rail on it, and this is a Hollow Sun IR laser, which appears to be the exact same type of laser that they're using. Now, they may be using a daylight visible laser and an IR laser. This is just the IR laser. It's in a titanium housing, and some of these are discontinued, so I had to uh, figure out which one I could actually get my hands on, and this was the only one I could actually find in stock, and that was over at Primary Arms. And then on top of it, I have an Enforce light. This is a WMLX Gen 2 IR and white light light. So, and this is set up just like I saw it set up on uh, online with the Estonian forces. This one, you can switch it between IR and visible light simply by flipping the switch. And then you have an integrated pressure pad back here that you can push in and turn the light on or off. And then you have a safety you can flip up. They'll keep it from accidentally being turned on or off. It's also interesting, interesting to note that they're running PMAGs. It seems like PMAGs have become the de facto standard of reliability and military usage around the world. And it's really interesting also to see that the Estonians are rocking those PMAGs. Now, will they continue on with this kit? I don't know. Uh, I do want to point out this though. So you're probably wondering why it has like a Staples rubber band around it because I literally cloned the rifle from a video that I saw, including them using just a standard, you know, like something you get out of your office desk rubber band to hold the cabling for the pressure switch 
for the IR laser. So yeah, I, that's how detailed I tried to get. Goofy as it sounds, that's what I was doing there. So anyway, yeah, this is really interesting. And I wonder if they're gonna continue on with the hollow sun optics. I've heard a couple of different theories as to why they went with hollow sun optics, uh, but I'm not gonna repeat those because those are just theories and, and guesses and I don't want to, uh, you know, take any guesses. Now the downside to doing this particular setup, we have the LMT sights that come on the rifle, but to run the light where they're running it, uh, at least in video, you do have to remove your front sight. So you will lose your backup iron sight capabilities if you go this route. Now you can take this front, this light off here, maybe put it off onto the side and leave your iron front sight up there and you can flip this up and it will co-witness um, through the red dot sight. So the Estonians went with a very compact rifle, again, with a 14.3 inch barrel. It's just a very, very small package. Also, it's interesting to note that the rail system, the handguard is fairly short. So by the time you get all these accessories out there, there's not a whole lot of real estate for you to wrap your hands around, except right back here towards the magazine well. So I think that's uh, rather interesting. Most modern rifles extend that handguard out further so that you can get more room for either your off hand that supports the rifle or for more accessories. In terms of accessories, there's enough rail space on there for a military service rifle, but I would like to have a little bit more room to place my large apish hands because I run out of rail space really, really quick. LMT builds a really, really nice rifle. And so for a small arms collector like me, having a reference rifle that is a pretty much clone correct gun for any NATO country or any military in the world, NATO or not, is something that's gonna be attractive to me. The downside to this rifle is the price. Again, these things are gonna range in price from anywhere from $3,000 all the way up to 3,500 bucks, depending on where you find them. And again, they're only gonna be in production for a short time. When LMT is done with their production run, they'll move on to something else, and these become modern day collectibles. All right, guys, if you enjoy the content here at the Military Arms Channel, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Also, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, another way to do it is to click that little join button you see right now underneath the video player you're watching. And last but not least, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 14 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.